Good morning. I'm Gordy Locke, coming to you live from South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. Uh, it is Tuesday, January 25th. It's hard to believe this month is almost over already. We had a very memorable service uh, Sunday morning. It was really good. Pastor Key spoke about reconciling differences. He spoke about the importance of unity. And the scripture references were very helpful in living that out. Um, one of the uh, scripture references was John 17, 20 through 23. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. This is Jesus speaking. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. For so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. That's awesome how uh, Jesus spoke about unity. Jesus wanted unity of the believers, and I think that's really neat. And then also, uh, he spoke about the arguments that were going on in the early church. And Paul stood up and spoke some simple words about unity. In Acts 15, 12 through 13, and 19 through 21. This is out of the Message uh, Bible. There was dead silence. No one said a word. With the room quiet, Barnabas and Paul reported matter-of-factly on the miracles and wonders God had done among the other nations through their ministry. The silence deepened. You could hear a pin drop. And in verse 19 it says, So there is my decision. We're not going to unnecessarily burden non-Jewish people who turn to the Master. We'll write to them a letter and tell them, be careful not to get involved in activities connected with idols, to guard the morality of sex and marriage, to not serve food offensive to Jewish Christians. Blood, for instance. This is the basic wis wisdom of Moses, preached and honored for centuries. Now in city after city, as we have met and kept the Sabbath, Everyone agreed, apostles, leaders, all the people. All the people agreed with what was shared, and they came together in unity. What a wonderful thing is when we gather together in unity. As Pastor um, shared about unity, it's critical in times of change. And just even now, as South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church is going through change, Pastor Keith and Linda are... Um, preparing for their transition into retirement, we need to pray for them as a transition, that God would give them wisdom as they move forward. And then also for us, uh, the church that, that remains here, um, that we pray for South Harbor Creek Church. We need to keep our relationships with their Heavenly Father and those at South Harbor Creek United Methodist strong. And this is something he shared, Keith, again on Sunday. Personal relationship and communication, face-to-face -face are vital. And in these times that we're living in, that's very difficult. It's been very difficult for all of us. It was really difficult for Pastor and, and Linda as they uh, went through COVID. And a lot of us are struggling now um, with relationships because of COVID. They seem... Uh, very difficult compared to what we, we can think back two years. And in, in some ways, it seems like a lot longer than that when our relationships were more normal. Um, but we need to pray. We need to come together. We need to pray. We need to pray for Pastor Keith and Linda, their family as a transition, and then also for the leadership of this church and even those above us that are, are now in uh, looking for another pastor to come and serve uh, here at South Harbor Creek. So let's pray about that. Let's be in prayer. Let's consider this and let's um, support Pastor Keith and Linda as they go through this transition. Um, my title for 
This morning's lesson is, who or what do we trust? And in today's world, it can be hard to be able to trust people and things. Most of us put our family, or put our trust in our family members. We trust our jobs, our bosses, our 401k, our bank account, our cars, our houses, and even our car tires in this kind of weather getting, trying to get around in the snow. Hopefully we have good enough tread on our tires to get around. There's a lot of things that um, we trust and we don't even think about it. Um, something as simple as our coffee maker in the morning. We put the water, we put the coffee in, and we trust that in a few minutes we'll have a, a finished product and we'll be able to wake our bodies up. But simple things that we trust and don't even give it a second thought. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, many of these people and things let us down over time. Relationships will fail. We can lose our job. We can have financial troubles. Our houses and cars and other things will let us down. They'll need repairs over time. I'm so thankful that we have a loving Heavenly Father that we can trust and always be there for us. I think of the old song, and this is dating me. This is, I'm guessing this is probably back in the 80s. Um, trust and obey. The chorus goes, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I love that. Very simple chorus, very simple song, but how, how timely it is even now um, that it's, we're, we're able to trust and obey. It's very simple, but it's very important that we continue to trust and obey. Uh, Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Psalm 37, 1 through 7, Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land, enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. Once again, trust. Trust in the Lord and do good. And then it, on ver in verse 5, trust in him, and he will do this. So let's look at verse 6. He will make your righteousness he will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn your vindication like the noonday sun be still before the lord and wait patiently for him do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes king david uh, had his many ups and downs and we read about them different times in psalms the book of psalms but um he ended up figuring it out. He ended up figuring out that trusting in God, his heavenly father, his loving heavenly father, uh, was the way to live his life. And through it all, lived a very rewarding life. God truly blessed him, and he even called him a man, called King David a man after his own heart. So let's be like King David, the example he, he lived, trusting in God. Uh, Psalm 56, uh, 3 and 4. When I'm, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God I trust, and I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Amen. We think about that, how people can uh, get to us at times, get under our skin. Um, maybe even defame us. Maybe uh, tell lies about us. But in the end, trusting God is the best way to live our lives. People will let us down. Things will let us down. But we need to trust in God. And God will see us through. Um, 
Trusting in God and his word is such a wonderful way to live life. Proverbs 3, 1 through 6. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them in the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Let's say that again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Wow. That's some powerful scripture. God's got a plan for our lives. God wants us to have a fulfilling and rewarding life. And it comes down to trusting in him for it, trusting our Heavenly Father for that. We are truly blessed. And I'm, I thank God every day for my blessings. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for you, all those out that are uh, live streaming, maybe watching later on today. Let's trust God together. Let's trust God for the best in here at South Harbor Creek, um, that God will bless us with the pastor that he wants us to have and that we will get behind him and get in, walk alongside him and, and be the Christians that God's called us to be. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you now for um, your word, all the many promises in your word commandments in your word, Lord, that we, as we follow your commandments, Lord, that um, we will have that blessed life. Thank you for each and every person out there. Those that are sick, Lord, I pray your healing on them. Um, those that are um, depressed, Lord, that you will give them, that you would bless them and give them light and give them hope. Help them to trust in you. Help us all to trust in you, Lord God. And we just thank you for this time together. We just thank you for your many blessings in our lives. Help us to count our blessings and be thankful and to be grateful. Pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I thank you for joining me, and I pray that you have a very blessed week.